Rashid, you served as the External Affairs Minister for some time. What are your um, views on how, since Modi's government has taken charge, how, wh what is your opinion on their foreign policy? I'm just beginning to, to wonder if there is a foreign policy. Okay. Um, obviously, there must be some, some, some kind of format they work within. But we've had, we've had some nodal points in our foreign policy in the past. Uh, Non-alignment was one very significant nodal point. Uh, that we were, uh, uh, we were, despite non-alignment, that we were um, uh, inclined, as it were, in our economic thinking towards, towards the Soviet Union. Uh, and that we believed in, 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 in particular restricted economic systems uh, in the interest of a large number of people who couldn't possibly, could possibly find space in the, in the market. Um, and therefore we, we needed to be in that sense paternalistic and protective of large numbers of people who were vulnerable. Now that's changed and we willingly changed that towards a different mix of a mixed economy that we opened up to huge tracts to the market and to the private sector. Uh, and there's no regret. We did well out of that. But nevertheless, that had also something to do with our foreign policy because there was East Europe, there was Russia, and much of our foreign trade was with them. Mm -hmm. uh, much of our supply was from them. Uh, similarly, our supply of fuel as we uh, grew as an economy came from the areas in which we had special relations with the Arab world. Um, we had a nodal point in Palestine and the support that we gave to the Palestinian people. Um, and then again, uh, outreach to, to Africa, where a lot of left-wing governments uh, were struggling for, for development. And we then made an outreach to Africa to say that though we are a developing country ourselves, large amount of money would be spent on development projects in, in Africa. Now, all that has changed. The world has changed and all that has changed uh, and therefore we, are, we now have a place uh, at, the, at the top table um, of uh, economic powers, but, uh, which is G20, but the fact remains that ideologically we are still unclear. Where are we on Palestine? Where are we on Iraq, Afghanistan? Where are we on on uh, the uh, former Soviet Union, the Russian Federation, uh, where are we uh, on, on uh, um, Europe and, and America, the differences that they have, where are we in the Indian, upon the Indian Ocean. I think at best I would describe that we are, uh, we are indulging in, in, in uh, conscious ambiguity of relationships. Uh, which is not the best kind of foreign policy because it can't last. Uh, Japan and China, China and Russia, Russia and the US, uh, US and Europe, Europe, um, Israel and Israel and Palestine. I think we will have to take clear positions on these, and it seems that we are postponing taking clear positions, uh, which is not necessarily a great thing for India and for India to have its space in the world. It won't be enough that we offer our markets. We also will have to retain and continue to sustain our spiritual and moral position that from the times of Jawaharlal Nehru, we had occupied in the world. And uh, the latest uh, United, uh, United Nations report on Kashmir, for instance, is a worrisome thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we reject it and we support the government's rejection of that report. but. Uh, we can't just curl up and go to sleep after having rejected that report. There is something more uh, that we need to do. We have problems. Uh, we have uh, problems that are, that are very complicated and they are exacerbated by the hostile interests that our neighbours take in those problems. But we can't continue to blame our neighbours. We'll have to deal with our neighbours uh, separately and we will have to deal with our own people who have, for any reason, a disquiet. We'll need to address it. We can't keep postponing it. We can't be in denial. And we can't just pretend that nobody is watching. The world is watching. India has a responsibility 
uh, to lead the world and, and, and lead the world in a moral way uh, and therefore on every moral issue, whether it's climate change, it's human rights, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, world economic order, uh, it's fighting terrorism, in every matter we'll have to have the highest score uh, if we can genuinely hope to be the leaders and, and the, to be the high table or in the, uh, uh, in the Security Council. Mm -hmm. What do you hope to see, um, for, for this vision to manifest, what do you hope India to implement or institute so that um, other countries see India more than just a trade partner? What would you like to see happen? Well, uh, you have to lead by example. And I think that's very important for, uh, uh, for that. We have to first show that in our own neighborhood in South Asia, uh, India leads by example, mm -hmm. that uh, we don't always look for reciprocity, that uh, taking into account that we are much larger, we are more successful, we, we're, we are a successful democracy, um, we have uh, made, uh, made a place for ourselves in the economic order of the world, uh, we should be willing to share more uh, with our small neighbors in the SARC. Uh, we, should be, uh, we should be willing to perhaps even uh, show some sacrifice. We should be willing uh, for greater outreach. If we want to keep China and, and others out of our neighborhood, then we must ensure that we provide what our neighborhood needs. Uh, you can't have it both ways. You can't uh, have your cake and eat it too. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and these are not easy decisions, I know that these are very difficult decisions. Politically, they are difficult decisions because anything you do for a neighbor may well uh, impinge upon expectations of your own people in the neighboring uh, border states. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's what leadership is about. You shouldn't take to leadership if you can't handle such difficult issues. Mm -hmm. The um, Shifting slightly, um, here in the UK, um, Brexit dominates the political discussions and, um, and one of the uh, key trade partners that the UK is looking to uh, after leaving the EU is India. And uh, one of the platforms which has come to light is the Commonwealth. What is your perspective on India's role in the Commonwealth and, and do you think it's a platform where um, India can start to exercise its kind of global influence? It's also s said to be a body that China, for example, isn't present in, which may give it more freedom to exercise its authority. I've, uh, I have, I've always had very strong commitment to the Commonwealth. But uh, it did seem for a while the Commonwealth was uh, overdue for an overhaul or overdue for, for, a, for a closure because it wasn't really, it wasn't really doing anything beyond uh, uh, periodic club meetings of, of its heads of state. And there too with, with some deep, deep uh, gaps between uh, the white Commonwealth as it were and the, and the, the not white Commonwealth. Now India straddles those two, uh, and India is is in a sense very very critical in keeping the Commonwealth together. Uh, therefore, uh, if if uh, post Brexit, the UK is looking for a more meaningful Commonwealth relationship, I I think India should be fully supportive of it. We can both provide energy and strength to the Commonwealth and we can provide greater cohesion to the Commonwealth. I think there are some very important, very important historical traditions and, uh, and linkages, both in terms of, of the language we speak, the, the, the constitutional structures that we follow, and the traditional economic links that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, so it would be, it would be another, another uh, uh, model available to those who have worked very closely together and who felt for a while that the, the, the new regional blocks were in a sense taking over and leaving little space for the Commonwealth. So we would be very happy, I'm sure we'd be very happy to pursue um, a broader program and a, and a, and a more directed uh, objective to the Commonwealth. Some have even suggested, considering that the UK and the India formed the uh, biggest uh, economies in the Commonwealth, that these two countries could lead 
lead the Commonwealth and, and, and even when Theresa May, um, she became Prime Minister, the first country she visited was India, which kind of shows the UK's keen interest in partnering with India. However, the, um, the visa issue for Indians to come here has become a, a problematic point. And, um, and one of the messages that was coming out was that the UK wants India's money, but it doesn't want its people. Um, what would be your thoughts on this and how this could be resolved? Well, it's a bit, a bit ironic. No? It sounds a little bit like uh, we were some years ago. Uh, we were happy to see their investment, but we weren't that keen that uh, people came and took our jobs. I mean, this is a, this is a challenge for all, all modern societies and modern governments, because um, you can't give away your jobs to outsiders. Um, but uh, if you don't give away some jobs, uh, then you don't really push investment and you don't push trade. Uh, so what is the right balance? You really have to work on, on the right balance. I believe that that there are some constructive conversations and dialogue going on between our two governments. And I, I heard that yesterday from our own High Commission officials. Mm -hmm. uh, let's keep our fingers crossed. I hope that, the, that politics uh, doesn't trump economics um, and that uh, there is uh, there isn't, uh, and that we from India don't take the politics of UK for granted uh, to assume that everything is possible. I think we'll have to work with sensitivity on both sides uh, to ensure that the politics remains remains on an even keel, and we get what we we want. I think that India is has is uh, a great contributor to the growth of modern modern day Great Britain, and. Uh, if this is made known uh, more extensively, not just by UK itself, but by India too, and at gatherings uh, where Indian politicians and public figures come and speak here, I think we would be all better off. Mm -hmm. S some people have suggested that the uh, UK needs India more than India needs the UK as a partner, as an economic partner, as a trade partner. What would be your thoughts on this? I think that's a, that's a futile way of looking at things. Um, there are things in which we need them more, there are things in which they need us more, but that's what the idea of a dialogue is. A dialogue is, is never completely asymmetrical and never entirely symmetrical. So there are, there are issues in which we, we or they will have to give and there are issues on which we will, they, either side will have to, to, to take more um, and gain from the other. But I think that's the, that's the true manner of, of exchange mm -hmm. between two equals. Mm -hmm. and, and what would you s say are those things that, for example, the, the, the India needs from the UK? Well, I Education, for example. Education, education is something that we are picking up very fast. Yeah. And I, I do hope to see a two-way traffic between India and the UK. Um, it's, it's wonderful. I am a product of, uh, of uh, UK education. I traveled from India to come here to Oxford University. And uh, I'm very proud of, of my uh, stint at, the Ox at Oxford. And I am enormously grateful for what Oxford has done for me. But equally, I am sure that in this globalized world, there are now institutions in India that can offer an equally rewarding experience to students from here. Um, after all, a lot of students from Britain stand uh, to gain from, from their stints at European universities. A lot of them go to the United States of America. Why not look at India also quite seriously? I think we now um, have an option of, of, uh, of giving opportunities, providing opportunities of uh, top class. Uh, of course, in subjects that, are, uh, that merit uh, movement from, from Europe to, to, the, to, to India. Uh, why not do computer studies in India, for instance, mm. or, or, or come to India for, for studies in engineering? Um, and then there are a vast number of subjects uh, in which there are people interested in this country uh, for which India would be a hub. I mean, if you want to do Sanskrit studies, for instance, you want to do uh, studies in, in, uh, in say, uh, medieval, medieval arts and sciences, etc., mm -hmm. India would provide an excellent opportunity. Mm -hmm.